This is the weirdest thing I have ever been sent. The second weirdest thing I have ever been sent. This is the Devoom Ditu. Cue the people in the comments section telling me that it's pronounced Ditu. I don't care. It's preposterousness is pure joy. Somebody sat in a meeting room said, we're going to make a Bluetooth speaker that is also a retro video games console for some reason and it's going to have little keyboard keys and it's going to have a screen on it that looks like a CRT monitor. Should it have a lever? Of course it should have a lever! Why wouldn't it have a lever? Everything should have levers! Whoever designed this is completely insane. What else should it have? I don't know, a stopwatch! Why? I don't know! And a scoreboard! I think it should be a magic eight ball! I think it should help people get to sleep! I think it should be an alarm clock! It should tell people the weather! It should give people notifications when things happen on their phone! It should basically do everything in the whole world! And they just threw all these ridiculous things at this thing and just said, That's a product! And someone said, Should we tell people what it does? No! Don't tell anybody what it does! Just send it out into the marketplace and see what happens. Should we make it cheap? No! Make it look like it came from Chinese Harrods! I'm not kidding when I say that this little box looks like it came from a Chinese Harrods. It feels like they have put most of their budget into the unboxing experience. When you open this thing up, it feels like the most quality, premium, retro little gadget you could possibly ever open. I, I think this might be my favourite ever unboxing. Mostly because it's the most preposterous thing I've ever seen. First and foremost, the Devoom Ditsu is a pixel art box. Which is apparently something you kids do these days. Um, I've never heard of this until now, but it seems that there is a thriving community of pixel artists. Um, and there seems to be a range of talents on display. <laughs> Why is the first thing I can see someone drawing boobs? <laughs> you can of course create your own artwork if you're that clever. I'm not that clever. Uh, though it is really easy to use, you can just doodle a little thing and then doodle another little thing and doodle another little thing and animate them together if that's your bag. And if that's not your bag, you could just steal other people's artwork from the community. Uh, that's exactly what I've done. I picked some of my favourites out and they are on display as my screensaver now. You can, of course, just take a photograph and use that to create pixel-based art, if you're some kind of cheater. Um, and you can create text-based versions that will just scroll across the screen. You can create backgrounds for those that are various presets such as this little beauty. What the hell is Metaballs? <laughs> I think whoever came up with this has Metaballs. <laughs> Metaballs of steel the size of my head. As a little toy for your desktop, this thing is super cute, but its main forte is actually its speaker quality. When comparing this to my Echo Dots, it's got better tonal range, it's got better balance, it's a nice flat response sound, it's got more warmth, it's got more clarity, and less distortion. I'm not a big fan of mono speakers, you may have heard me moaning about that previously, uh, but if you're looking for something as just like a bedside alarm clock, you're not going to go far wrong with something that sounds like this. In that regard, the only thing that I would suggest they improve about this when it comes to sound quality would just be a little audio jack output or some kind of Bluetooth pass-through mode. It would be amazing if I could actually play music on my phone, it appear on the little device, but it actually come out of some nice bigger speakers. Something with, um... Phenomenal cosmic powers. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna put that bit in, I'm gonna overdub that with Jafar. <laughs> My actual favourite thing about this device is that the screen will print up like a notification icon 
if you get a notification on your phone from an app that it recognizes. So I'm gonna tell you which ones work now. Some of these are pretty weird. Kakao, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Incoming Call, Missed Call, WhatsApp, Skype, Line, WeChat, QQ, Pixel Chat, and Viber. Some of those have definitely got government operatives watching you, but some of them don't, and they're the ones I'm interested in, and they work really well, but the one thing that they could improve with the notification service is that it stayed on the screen until you dismissed it. It dismisses itself after about five or six seconds, so if you don't happen to be looking at it as the notification pops up, and I know that they want you to be looking at it all the time, we're not going to be. Unfortunately, if you're not looking at it, you're not going to see the notification. Whichever music source you're listening to, the forward and back buttons act as next track and previous track, and the little lever acts as play and pause. Genius! You can of course listen to music from Spotify on your phone or any other media app you would normally use because well, it's a Bluetooth speaker. But if you prefer, you can use their app specifically to browse music that is on your phone. This is weird. They've basically bumbled in every piece of audio from your phone into one big folder. And it's just usually full of strange recordings of things you don't remember putting there. What's that? What? what is that? But you also have the option for radio, and I really, really like this. Uh, the radio can be selected from a massive, massive list, but I will point out it is not um, all-inclusive. There is no Kerrang! radio, for example. I can't find any of the BBC uh, channels, so there's clearly stuff missing, but you are pretty much sport for choice. I've got loads and loads of stuff. That's a weird one. I'm going to keep that in. That's, that's the end of that segment. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, for audio then, you have sleep sounds. These are preposterous. <laughs> you open up the app, and you browse to whatever sleepy sound you want to listen to, and then you go to sleep like this. You kind of close your eyes and then realize it's stopped. And then it starts again. And it loops like that. It kind of stops and then fades back in again. It stops and fades back in again. And it does it like every minute. And this is for every single sleep sound. You aren't going to use this. Nobody is. If you like pixel games, you'll like these pixel games. Um, pixel Tetris, if that's something you're into. Using the little buttons and the joystick, do stuff. It's fine. It works. Uh, pixel Slot. Again, the buttons and joystick do stuff. I don't really know what Pixel Slot is. I sat there playing it going, I don't know what's happening. Uh, Pixel Dice, which throws some dice. Uh, Magic 8 Box. Astro Battle. That's not Astro Battle. Flappy Wings. I, do I don't know what that could be trying to rip off. Pixel Snake. Pixel Race. And Block Eliminator. These games, if you like, pixel-based games will pixel up your life. I don't like games. It's got an alarm clock which works great, but the only thing that's a bit of a shame here is you can't actually pick your own song to wake up to. It will just play whatever the last song was, or you can get it to play a sleep sound. Just in case you wanted your alarm clock to put you back to sleep. Um, it's got planners and calendars, and the planners are things that are kind of already laid out for you, like a baby planner. If you don't know how babies work, there's a planner to walk you through how babies work. 6am, milk. Sleep, milk. Outdoor activity, at 9.30 in the morning. Water, sleep, milk. Sleep, milk. Sleep, milk. Outdoor activity, 6 o'clock at night. Sleep, milk. 11 o'clock at night, bath. Punctuated with a Bart Simpson for some reason. I'll be completely fair to them, <laughs> you can change those outs for whatever words you want, whatever time scale you want, and use whatever icons you want. This is actually a really good idea. A lot of the things that this can do can be accessed by going through its menus, but unfortunately some of the most useful features, like the radio for example, you have to get the app out of your pocket. This is a bit of a shame. 
If there was one thing I think they could improve upon, for the most part, it would be to allow you to choose your own menu system. At the moment, this menu system takes me through these things. Games, uh, paint so I can draw pixels and stuff. Tools, for example, you've got a score board. You've got a stopwatch. You've got a decibel meter. La 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 la. La. Which is mental. Um, and you've got a timer. Uh, that would be great if I could replace that with my own things, such as radio. Other things in the menus are... Clock, you can change the time directly on this thing. And a final thing on the menu is the music. If you click on that, you can choose between a Bluetooth or its internal TF card reader. Aside from that, this button just changes between the clock, a light, they're calling that a light, um, some random load of stuff I don't like, uh, some more random stuff I'm not bothered about, more random stuff, more random stuff, uh, more random stuff, and then eventually the things that I chose, my favourites. So there, that's all the buttons really do, you've got volume up and down, you've got left and right to go through your menus or play the games, that's like a little selector, and then that's, that's kind of it, that's, that's what the box does. The only other improvement I'll recommend is that they allow you to switch these LEDs at the bottom off. They will keep you awake at night, and there's nothing you can do about it, they're quite bright. This is beautiful though. I've not seen anything like this in my life, and it is stupendously cute. Um, I am kind of in a position now where I put it on my bedside table, and when I come to work in this room I think, I wish it was on my desk. And so I move it to my desk and then I go to bed at night and I think, I'd really like that back in the bedroom now. I love it. It's really, really cool. Whether it's worth its price tag will depend on whether you're into things like pixel art or whether you're looking specifically for something that looks really different. They are its main selling points, I have to say. There are better speakers out there, of course, but I think as an alarm clock, it's probably the best alarm clock I've ever seen. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms that it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know you want to be notified when I upload videos. These amazing people here are my patrons and I just can't live without them. They keep me going, they make this channel happen. If you want to be a patron of mine, you can come and do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I'll love you forever. These are my social medias, my Facebooks, my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there and I promise to make you laugh. See you next time. Of course it should have a lever! Why wouldn't it have- It's got a lever! Why has it got a lever? Damn it. It's preposterousness is pure... <coughs> pure... <laughs> no. Make it look like you came out of Chinese Harrods. <laughs> First and foremost... <laughs>